Oh, hey there. I almost didn't see you there. Hello, my fellow nerds. We got another custom e-bike build for you. I'm starting to realize, maybe I'm starting to realize who my target audience is. You're just a bunch of nerds. That's pretty cool. The more I talk to you guys, the more I realize we are a freaking cool community. That's all I'm gonna say. And it's, it's really great that I feel like I'm not so alone in this world because there's other nerds out there that are really into, big into custom e-bikes. So I'm gonna go over this custom e-bike build that I built today for a customer. It's a Raleigh Rally Talus 5.0. I'm gonna go over what what we did do it, why, what's cool about this bike. I'm gonna do some performance tests, test top speed, hill climbing, all that jazz. If you're new to this channel, which I don't know why you are by now, come on, I've been doing this for years. Take bikes, convert them into custom-made e-bikes. That's what I do professionally. If you want to do this to your bike, check out johnnynerdout.com. Help support the pirate ship. Uh, I got everything you need for your custom-made e-bike. And help. If you're running into snags and you're like, ah, why is my bike doing this? Why is my bike making a noise like this? Book a consultation with me. I could do virtual ones, we could do video chats. Let's get to the bottom of your issue. Not just bike related issues. If you're having, you know, other issues, eating problems, car problems, your uh, furnace went out. Maybe don't, maybe, maybe not that. Maybe not the last two. Let's keep it to e-bike related stuff. Anyways, check out johnnynerdout.com. I got a forum there, I got a blog, I got, a, I got everything, everything you need. Okay, anyways, project at hand, uh, topic at hand. Get out of here, what am I doing here? Sorry, I'm super tired and I had a whole bunch of coffee, so I'm like just enough where I'm like super tired, but also like super amped, I'm amp tired. Super tired jacked. Um, so this is a Talus 5.0. This is somebody that they shipped me this bike, they wanted it converted. They had, they actually they sent, sent me two of these bikes. One's a, a 4.0, but they had them in their garage and they're like, this thing's been here for like eight years, haven't ridden it much. Th these things, both of them are like in mint condition and they're good bikes. And they're like, I don't want to spend three grand on a brand new bike that may suck. It may be poor quality. I have this bike. I know that this bike is not junk because I've had it for eight years. I've ridden it twice a year for the last eight years, but I know that it's a good quality bike. My legs just don't like riding up hills. So might as well just convert this one. I converted both of these bikes. I think it was about 2,400 bucks in, in parts. You know, my labor was like another 350. Um, per bike out the door he's got two electric bikes for about 2800 bucks you know he had the bike so he didn't have to go and buy a new bike and these are good bikes they're not a question mark whether or not eh, is this going to be a good bike do they use good components or not they use good components on this one um, obviously they're not like super top end but you know we'll go over everything here it's an aluminum frame so this is a good candidate it's, it's still pretty lightweight um, the tires are like brand new on this, unless they just replaced them. These things have seen little, little to no use. That's why I have a reason to believe this bike has barely been written, but it's gonna get a lot of life out of this bike going forward. It's got a suspension front fork, uh, mechanical disc brakes. So we just put new levers on it with the integrated brake cutoffs on it. We've got a 500C color display here. This is a nice color display. I recommend, this is this is my favorite display that I recommend people getting, unless you want to have a USB charge port to like charge your phone. If you're planning on going long epic rides and you want to make sure you don't have a dead phone, then I'd go with something that has a USB port, either the 850C, 860C, DPC-18, one of those types of things. Um, next to it is a throttle. Um, yes, you could have a throttle on a mid-drive, especially the Bafang aftermarkets. If you buy a pre-made bike with a mid-drive on it, you probably won't have a throttle. But if you do it yourself, or you have somebody do it for yourself, you will have a throttle on it. We got a 52 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery. This is over 900 watt hours. So this is gonna have a really long range. We're talking 30 miles on the low end, probably 70 on the high end, depending on how much you're riding or how much you're pedaling. Hills, if you're going up or down hills. The wind's at your back. If you're riding in a hurricane and it's behind you, you'll go 100 miles. We got a 44 tooth up front. Got the Bafang BBS02 750 watt motor. Puts out, man, whatever 25 amps times 58.8 is. It's like 13 to 1400 watts, somewhere around there. Um, got a gear shift sensor here. I like to run this. This cord, is this was perfect spot for this because the cable that comes off of here that connects to the controller 
it's like perfectly stretched out. So I don't have any excess cabling down there. And actually this bike didn't have a whole lot of excess cabling almost anywhere. So I was really happy with this build for both of these bikes. It came out like, you know, fairly clean. And it was actually a really easy install for the motor as well. A lot of times you gotta put spacers or adapters or there's something wonky with it. This bike is, if somebody's like, what's a good easy bike? This bike. It, there's a little, they got the little um, kickstand mount there that, that uh, supports the chain stays right by the seat tube there. So you can run all the cabling down there. I love, I love it when bike frames have that. It's got an eight speed in the rear. I think it's got a 30, it looks like a 34 or 36 tooth in the rear. So it's a 44 to 34 roughly. So it's not quite one to one gear ratio in the lowest gear, but uh, hill climbing is still great. And I'll show it to you now. Let's go do some performance tests. So you can see climbing the hill, it's no problem. I actually, it was hard for me to keep it the front wheel down, hitting the full throttle. I had to like lean down and put the seat down all the way. So if you were to either go with a lower chainring up front or change out your cassette with something that bigger back here, yeah, this thing would be a crazy off-roader. Um, top speed was 31, which is kind of weird. I'm not totally sure why it was only 31. That seems kind of low. Um, I think it, it is cold out here. We are in February but by the time you see this video, it'll probably be August. So realistically, this bike will probably be going 35. I mean, that's just, for the 52 volt battery and a mid drive, it should be going mid thirties. Uh, this uh, is the Olivio derailleur back there. Works just fine. We put a new chain on there, put a KMC X8. So it's a, it's a, it's a really strong chain, really nice chain. Yeah, I think that's all we did to it. So this is a, this is just like the epitome of a great example of a bike that would be thrown up on the used market and probably would have sold for just a couple hundred bucks because the owner's like, ah, we're never using these. Let's clear out the garage. Or let's put in like, you know, a little over a thousand bucks into it and have a killer e-bike, something that'll blow any pre-made e-bike out of the water, spec-wise, performance-wise, all that. And you know that this bike is going to fit you good because you bought it and it fits you. You buy a pre-made bike, they're always one size fits most, which means that it's not perfectly sized to anybody. Yeah, I think that's about it. Hope you guys like this. Check out my other videos. If you're looking at uh, doing an install on your bike, you know, check my playlist for uh, custom e-bike builds. I've probably done one for your bike, and if not, I'll probably be doing one soon. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys.